Some of this you guys already know, or it's been lightly touched on earlier, and some of it will hopefully be new. But we're going to talk about uh, why financial literacy is important, when is the best time to teach it, how, that's my favorite part. I've tried a lot of things in the last 10 years with lots of different people. And then look at some case studies, hopefully get everybody excited. So, why bother? Why bother with financial literacy? Well, I'm sure we've all seen the headlines. 50% of Americans have appreciably no savings, which again, turns a, a problem into a crisis. Um, and I think probably though, for, for an institution like Valencia, the biggest reason to, to focus on this is probably the most obvious. We want to reduce dropout. Now, this is national data, um, and I tried to get Valencia's numbers, and I know it's really tough because you have so many people transferring out and then probably lose track, um, may lose track. I think that Valencia probably... If you do the ultimate um, graduation rate, and maybe it's six, seven years, it's probably similar to that four-year public based on the information I could find. I don't know if <laughs> Dan's nodding, so I'm feeling pretty good. Might even be a little bit better. Um, I think I found a stat somewhere around the 50% mark but there was a good 20 to 30% that were transferring out that you know are finishing uh, at UCF or another institution. Um, but at the same time, there's still a lot of room for, for improvement here. Um, sometimes it's good when you have a big number to chip away at, uh, more chance to, to move the needle. Um, so what you may not know, or maybe you do, is that financial problems are routinely named as the number one reason why students drop out. It's, it's a no-brainer. I just can't afford it. I've got to, like uh, Julio shared this morning, his dad was diagnosed with cancer. I mean, there's so many things that we can't um, control, but uh, there's, things, there's areas where we can definitely help. So, let's break this down. Some of the research into this issue centers around the fact that students really underestimate the cost of college. And there's a lot of reasons, I think that there's a lot of things that contribute to this. One of the programs that I have been involved with over the last several years is I have this workshop called how to survive on a teacher's salary, and I've gone out to, <laughs> uh, we identified educators at our company as a population that um, could really use <laughs> our help. And I've gone out to the Direct Connect to UCF campuses in Cocoa Beach, Ocala, out in Claremont, e at UCF, and uh, helped students that are on their way to becoming teachers, so future teachers. And there's a lot of anxiety with this group. Well, I want to be a teacher. I'm called to be a teacher. This is my dream. I'm going to college to be a teacher, but I'm really scared. Am I going to be able to make it? Can I live on a teacher's salary? And then, you know, the news, teachers' pay is stalled, or, you know, there's like this tiny raise every five or ten years. Um, they're having to pay more of their, pen their pension benefits and health benefits, and, you know, it wasn't really a fat salary to begin with. So one of the exercises that I would do, or do with, the, with these um, future teachers, is let's, okay, let's start now. We'll figure out, we know what you're going to make, because most people know which county they're going to work in, and starting salary isn't, you know, secret information. Um, so go in, I would basically ask them, have you ever tried to figure out what your 
education will cost. And generally, it's, you know, deer in headlights. People sort of, students kind of approach college in a semester by semester fashion without a lot of looking ahead. And, and a lot of the costs are predictable, they're not mysterious. But I think an exercise in your maybe first freshman success class that I heard a lot about sounds really great would be to just map it out. What is it going to cost you? How much will you need to borrow? You know, do you need to figure out a way to make more money in your part-time or full-time job? Like, literally map out the, uh, the experience to figure it out. So students do fail to plan for the four- to six-year commitment it's going to take. And then we know that small-dollar emergencies really derail students. Like, my car broke down. I just can't afford to fix it. I guess I'm going to have to drop out, you know, over a $400 car repair cost. Um, unfortunately, this affects our most vulnerable students. And we know that students who drop out are unlikely to return. In fact, I found the national statistic was a 30% return rate after dropping out for just one semester. Um, it's really great to be in this field because I study this data all the time and I'm making, you know, doing workshops and going out. Because when my stepson finished his AA here at Valencia, he told me, I don't think I'm going to continue. I think an AA is good enough and I'm satisfied with myself. And I knew the stat that if he didn't keep going, if he didn't do his direct connect to UCF, that he probably wouldn't go back to school. And I thought, man, you're my investment. Like, I've invested in you. I want a return on this investment. I didn't say that to him.